This is our third and final lesson on why study the Bible. We've been covering this the past uh, several weeks. The, uh, the study of the Bible is important because it contains God's will for our lives. It is the only absolute authority for the children of God. As we mentioned today, we want to lay out some basics or some information for studying the Bible. So when we look at studying the Bible, first of all, the first step is reading. The first step is reading. Uh, Paul said that when we read, we understand what we understood. You know, we understand what we read. Ephesians 3 verses 2 through 5. We understand what we are reading. Now, that means that we need to read with understanding. I know sometimes we can fall into that trap of wanting to keep up with our reading list or keep up with our uh, reading the Bible in a year, and sometimes we fly through things and our mind is on other things or we're looking at other things or we're focused on other things and we're not listening to what we are reading. We have to read with the understanding. Good Bible reading is to read it and to understand it. Scriptures also should be read to others. Uh, 1 Timothy 4 verse 13, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Revelation chapter 1 verses 1 through 3, it says, The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. When we look at that that scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, where it says, give attention to reading, uh, the New American Standard Version actually adds public in there. The original Greek language implies public reading of the Scriptures. So when it is saying, give attention to public reading, that's the emphasis that's behind it. Now, we need to read privately as well, but we also need to be reading God's Word in the assembly. You know, we started a couple of years ago reading Scripture before the Lord's Supper. We need to be reading Scripture. Uh, both publicly and privately. The Revelation 1-3 is talking, when it talks about the he, it's talking about the public reader of the day, that they are talking for the listeners. So you have he who's reading and they who are listening to it. So what are some practical ways to read the Scriptures? You know, in preparing for a Bible class, we're in... Hebrews chapter 12. You know, in preparing for a Bible class, you should, we should read the text for the lesson several times. Several times before we come together on, uh, on Sunday. Now that should be easy considering I'm getting through about 6 to 12 verses a week. You don't have to read much several times during the week. But we should read that text I can't tell you how many times I read the text that we're about to study in a given week. Why? We should all prepare for that. Look up and read each verse that is listed. You know, check what is being said. Um, Try to gain as much understanding as you can from the reading before we get into class and start discussing it. For your own personal Bible study, there's all kinds of reading plans. Uh, There is every reading plan you can think of available for you. You know, one uh, lady was talked about that she had picked out a read through the Bible in one year plan and she had read it for 50 straight years. You know, you take your pick. Um, I have thrown a couple out at the start of the year for the past several years. I've put a different one each year. Me personally, I like to change it up. I like to read through chronologically sometimes. I like to read through in order sometimes. I like to flip-flop between Old Testament, New Testament sometimes. There's all different kinds. Pick something that you want to do. 
Another good plan, read every book or read one book every day for a month. Begin with a short book, such as as like 1 John. Read it through in one sitting every day for a month. It won't take you more than about 15 minutes to read the book of 1 John. Sit down and read that. Read it every single day for a month. Um, I guarantee you will understand that book a whole lot better at the end of that month. Divide the longer books into shorter sections. Read the first section daily for a month. Read the second for a month and so forth. Divide the Gospel of John into three, three sections, seven chapters each. You know, after three months, you should have finished the book of John. Alternate between short books and long books. You know, within three years, you will, re- and this is the thing that's good here, within three years, you will have read the entire New Testament 30 times. Because you will have read every book every day for a month. You will have read the entire New Testament 30 times. That's another way to do it. The, the goal here, though, is read. Some of us, it may be that we spread it out. We read a little bit in the morning. We read a little bit over lunch. We read a little bit in the afternoon. But we read a, to- you know, a totality over the day. Some of us, it's better for us to take the time and sit down and read the whole reading in one, one time. Sometimes it may be that we can't read as much to do the whole reading the Bible in a year um, because it just we just can't read that much in a single day. It depends on what our state status is in life. The, cold, the key is we've all got to be reading, and we need to be reading some each and every day uh, of the week. Second step, number two, when it comes to Bible study, we need to interpret or evaluate what we read. We need to interpret or evaluate what we read. So by reading, we learn what the Bible says. By interpreting and evaluating, we learn what it means. It's not enough just to read. We have to understand what it means. Acts chapter 8, verses 30 and 31. You know, Philip ran to him, ran to the uh, Ethiopian nobleman, heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come and sit with him. You know, there are many passages that are very easy to understand. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Right? Very simple passage for us to understand. We interpret them by reading them, but some some scriptures require us to put in a little more effort to understand uh, what is being said. I've enjoyed our study on Hebrews because there are ways that I have thought about in that book of what I thought that the writer was meaning and the way he was writing some of those things that I've completely uh, kind of changed my view since I've studied it for our class. By studying it and, and really digging into it, we understand what it means. We figure that out. You know, some of the old rules for Bible study are good. First, consider what is said. Examine... Is it in the Bible? What somebody says, is it actually there? And then when you start looking at it, you have to study the context or the setting of what is said. You know, a a young Mormon one time was asked about baptizing someone. He said, well, I'm not going to baptize anybody because it says in Hebrews 5.4 that no one should take this honor to himself but he who is called by God. Well, it doesn't match the context of what's being said in Hebrews chapter 4. The the young Mormon didn't understand the context of the entire chapter. He was grabbing one little, uh, you know, he was grabbing one little verse out of the, the text. You know, you have to understand what everything says. Uh, a member of a group one time was trying to justify uh, that... They should meet on the Sabbath day. And he said, well, Paul says there should be no gathering on the first day of the week. From 1 Corinthians 16, chapter 16. 
There should be no gathering on the first day of the week, so we're not supposed to get together on the first day of the week. It's on Saturday instead. Taking one little verse and trying to use it uh, for his emphasis. Uh, A Methodist preacher one time regarding the Old and the New Testaments tried to use verses, uh, Ephesians 2 verse 14, said, well, it says in Ephesians 2 verse 14, who has made both one. Therefore, he made the Old Testament the same as the New Testament. And they're together. They're one. Well, again, it's not the context of what's being talked about in Ephesians chapter 2. We can't teach the truth with the wrong verse. And we can't pick and choose and take one little snippet of a verse and use that for something if we're ignoring the context of the chapter. A lot of times you've got to read at least the paragraph. Sometimes you've got to read the chapter. And there's some books that you've got to read about half of the book to understand the context of what he's talking about. Look at our study in Hebrews and how everything we are studying now in chapter 12, you have to take back to what he just talked about in the previous three or four chapters to truly understand what he's telling them. You have to take it as a whole in its context. You have to understand all of it. Now we also should not teach the truth with the wrong verse. (laughs) Well, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 2, But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We need to be using the right verse to teach what we're, what we're trying to teach. You know, I've, I've heard of people, I've mistakenly done it a time or two myself, where we've grabbed a a verse and it's not teaching what we tried to throw it in there to teach. Now, I do appreciate preachers who have said, I know that the context of this doesn't fully fit, but it makes a point. You know, you've got to watch what you're using. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, But as it is written, Eye has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. That verse is not referring to heaven. But some people will take that verse and try to use it to describe heaven. That's not what he's talking about in that scripture. You can't use it to talk about heaven because that's not the context of what's being used. It's talking about that all Christians have the mind. uh, It's not saying all Christians have the mind of Christ in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16. It's saying inspired men of God had the mind of Christ. We have to understand also who is speaking. So we've got to take the proper context and see where it was said and what it was said about, but then we've got to understand who's talking. Who is, who is speaking there? You know, some have said we shouldn't contend for the faith against denominations. Because Acts chapter 5 verses 38 and 39 says, Now I say to you, keep away from these men, let them alone, For if this plan or this work of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. They say, you take that scripture, and that's telling us we should just leave denominations alone. Well, that's not the context of what's being said there, and that's not who he's talking about. He's talking specifically about specific instances when he gives that scripture. You've got to understand that when you do your study. That's part of studying the Bible. Who said it? What were they talking about? What was the context of what they were talking about? People will try to use Psalm 150 verses 3 and 4 to justify instrumental music. When it says, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the lute and harp, praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Who said it? King David did. What was he under the old dispensation? Is under the old law. You've got to know what's the timing. Who said it? What was he talking about? But then to understand the Bible, you've got to understand who was it said to? Who were they talking to? Not every passage directly applies to us. 
We can learn from it, but not every passage was written directly to us. John 14, verse 26, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Well, we have the ability to understand the things Christ said because we have our Bibles now. But that scripture, we have to understand, was given to His apostles. His apostles were being told, I am sending a helper to you who is going to give you the knowledge of all of these things so you have the ability to teach everybody else. That's what he was talking about. Again, people will try to use that scripture and say, well, see, it says the Holy Spirit's going to come bring all this to us. That's not what he's saying. It's not who he's talking to. It's not talking to us. But then we've also got to consider all that is said. Psalm 119 verse 160, the entirety of your word is truth. And every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Isaiah 28 verse 10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. All of it comes together to form truth. We have to study everything that is said. Every passage tells the truth, but not all the truth is in every passage. Let me say that again. Every passage tells the truth, but not every truth is in every passage. In other words, I've got to study multiple things. Some use Romans 5 verse 1 or John 3 16 and say we are all saved by faith only. However, we know that those verses don't talk about repentance and confession, but other places do. From Titus 1.5, a young preacher said that elders could oversee a whole city of congregations. He had not considered 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2, which gave more information about it. In other words, we've got to take the Scripture as a whole. We've got to look at all of the Scripture to understand what we must do. Best means also of interpretation is to interpret the Bible by the Bible. Interpret the Bible by the Bible. We should let Scripture teach us. Now, we can use, we have great tools today. We have cross-references. We have comparative passages that are listed in our Bibles. If you do things in a computer program, you can easily switch back and forth to those passages that are like each other. We have concordances, we have indexes, we have topical Bibles that give you the whole list of scriptures on certain topics. We've got great tools in order to be able to find everything said on a certain subject. Also, we need to uh, determine the meaning of words. Compare verses. Notice how words are used in the various passages. Good Bible dictionaries are a help, although you've got to remember that Bible dictionaries were written by man and most of them were written by denominational uh, individuals. How, why is that important? In, in The word coming, if you look the word coming up in Vine's uh, dictionary, it lists premillennialism as a definition of the word coming. Got to be careful, right? Because it's written by men. But they are helpful. Good Bible dictionaries. Now, follow God's commandments and we will have Bible knowledge. We need to follow His commands and study His Bible, study Scripture, and let Scripture talk for itself. But we've got to understand all those different things when we are studying. We've got to evaluate. Number three, the third step is application. Application by reading and interpreting. So we've read, we've evaluated or interpreted. Then now we gain an understanding of what it says and means, but then we've got to apply it. Many people know what the Bible says, but they make no application. We need to pray for wisdom to properly apply God's Word. James 1 verse 5 tells us that. Someone said, what's the best translation of the Bible? Somebody responded and said, a translation into one's life. We've got to apply it. 
We've got to apply what we read. You know, sometimes it's its best commentary, right? You know, one commentary said on Philippians 2.4 where it says, Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also the interests of others. Somebody said, this verse doesn't need exposition, it just needs application. It's true. You know, many of the verses, almost all the verses in the Bible are true that same way. But we have got to apply it. We've got to let God's Word penetrate our hearts and change our lives. James 1, verse 21 through 25, when it tells us be doers, not hearers only. I can sit by and read the Bible all day. If I don't make application in my life, I'm doing nothing with it. We know, you know, Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10, it talks about that, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. You know, the old law, God wanted them to do that. They wanted them to put those commandments on their heart and for them to serve Him with their hearts and we know that they didn't. They didn't do it. They just ticked off the commands. But we have to do what the Bible says. John 13 verse 17, If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So after reading and studying various passages of the Bible, we need to ask, what application can I draw for my life? How am I going to apply this? So when we talk about reading something for those 30 days, and we apply it and we learn what it says, then I've got to say, how do I put this to use? How do I help myself? We need to remember the power of the word itself. Hebrews 4 verse 12 is sharper than a two-edged sword. The word of God is not just a collection of words, but a living and a life-changing dynamic force. Like a surgeon's knife, the word of God penetrates into our being, and it should. We should apply from it. Now, we went over some things for helping reading. We talked just briefly about applying things. We've got to make sure, again, we read everything in context, but use some study tools. Um, The recommendation that I've always heard is if you're studying a set of passages over a week, the, the very last day should be the only day you open up a commentary. Why? Because you should have enough understanding of those verses from your study throughout the week before you ever open something that man wrote. Study it. uh, You know, if you're studying Scripture, get in and study that Scripture. Look up the definitions. Look at cross-references and look at other Scriptures that match it. Look at the context of the chapter. Don't go looking at what man writes until the very end. I I use commentaries very, very little in my sermon preparation. But when I do, it's the very last thing I do, and I usually look at multiples of, you know, multiple authors' commentaries uh, if I'm ever looking for them. We can discern what Scripture says without reading what a man thinks it does. Um, We have that ability. We have the ability to cross-reference and look things up. We need to be studying And then we've got to take what we learn and we've got to apply it to ourselves. We should always approach the Bible as the absolute authority and we should have awesome respect for God's Word because according to Revelation 20 verse 12, that's what's going to judge us on the last day. We need to always study the Bible with an open mind and an honest heart. We need to get rid of former ideas and go to the Bible to learn God's will. Like I've said, when I've studied, we've been studying Hebrews and I've changed my understanding of some of those verses. Why? Because as I go into the study and I'm, re- I'm studying it and learning it, I'm open to learning what Scripture's telling me. No matter what I've thought of it my whole life. We need to be open when we're studying the Bible because you know what? You might be surprised. Something that you've thought uh, was a meaning of something for years and years may not necessarily be exactly what he's saying. So be open. Uh, Open your heart. Open your mind. uh, Get rid of former ideas and be ready to learn God's will. We need to be studying. We need to be learning. We need to be reading. We need to be in God's word for all of the reasons we've talked about over the last three weeks. Are we students of God's word? 
If you need anything this afternoon, please come as we stand and sing.